So hello, everybody. Thank you for jumping in. Um, as uh, per usual, welcome to the lecture series of the University of the Underground Music Incubator Program. The University of the Underground was founded in February 2017 and is a free, pluralistic, and transnational university based in the basement of nightclubs and actively working with both institutions and nightlife. As part of Tour de Moon, the University of the Underground is running a music incubator program from October to December that provides practical challenges and opportunities for young music makers to develop their crafts, as well as a series of lectures on music making and political and cultural theory. So tonight we have Daria again, which you've already uh, had the pleasure of, of meeting. And it's also a great opportunity for me to remind all of our participants that on November 23rd is the deadline to send over your notation, your participation to this songbook. Um, so this lecture from Daria is, I hope, a good uh, inspiration for what you'll be sending over <laughs> before that date. Um, so I'll let Daria present uh, himself and you can also present yourself visually. That would be great for those who um, might have some problems uh, seeing you. So for example, uh, my name is Chloe, I'm white, I have a blue sweater and uh, I'm blonde. And Daria, I'll let you uh, present yourself in the same way. Hi, uh, I'm Daria. I have uh, wild hair, it's black, uh, and I'm wearing a black sweater. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, glad to be here for the second week. Should I just get right into it then? Okay, I'm gonna share the screen if everybody uh, see. Can everybody see this? Perfect. Okay. Cool. Okay, great. So uh, I'm going to continue off last week, but instead of focusing on uh, only Western Europe, I kind of extended the scope uh, to all of Eurasia. Uh, I wanted to start with some uh, very broad generalizations that uh, you may or may not agree with during the course of this lecture, uh, but I wanted to challenge you anyways. Um, since we're going to be dealing with traditional and folk systems, there are certain um, things to keep in mind uh, with regards to notation. And the first is that most of the music, if not all of it, has been orally transmitted uh, throughout millennia from master to student. And every culture that I will present you has a name for a master student relationship. Uh, so notation has not been at the core of musical practice. Uh, these uh, musics are sometimes heavily tied to a uh, ritualistic tradition, either religious, spiritual, or just societal. Um, they have uh, generally evolved from uh, poetic meters, at least melodically speaking. So uh, many of the notations can be based off of poetry, for example. And uh, most of this music has also been formalized at one point in each culture's respective history, uh, usually through folk music that made its way to the court. And uh, Bards and wandering musicians, uh, workers uh, would inspire themselves off of uh, work songs and agri agricultural work songs they would hear in the countryside. Uh, gentlemen scholars or ladies of the court, so any kind of erudite uh, would then uh, either want to transcribe this music or talk about it in a written context. Uh, there's also the question of, as we will see, uh, mathematical exploration of sounds uh, that have been going on since antiquity, not just a mm. European practice. Um, and to kind of go along with that, historically speaking, uh, throughout Eurasia, there has been a very heavy tradition of an intersection between music, mathematics, and mysticism, so any kind of spiritual or cosmological 
considerations, as we will see. Um, and finally, very important, if not the most important, that uh, since the colonial period, since European colonization, uh, there have been a lot of outside influences um, that have come to either syncretize with these musics or have been rejected. Um, and notation can be a reflection of that. So uh, we're going to start in China. Uh, very, very ancient, profound, deep uh, musical tradition. And uh, very broadly speaking, uh, there are three categories of notational systems as delineated uh, in the book, Music of Billions. Uh, one of them is tablature. Here's a, and I've provided some image-based examples. Uh, second category is pitched. Uh, Gong Chifu is actually very interesting because it is, it is the one that influenced Korean and Japanese notational systems that unfortunately we do not have time to delve deeper in. Uh, to both tablature and pitched notations do not include rhythmic, uh, precise rhythmic details, only very broad uh, rhythmic schemes. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Chinese do have uh, a format uh, from going top to bottom. Like that. Um, and the last, the third, uh, cipher notation is a uh, more, it's a contemporary and is most widely used uh, today. Uh, this does include precise rhythmic uh, details um, indicated by dots. And finally, less used but still prevalent, graphic notation, um, as evidenced by these uh, very curved linear lines. Uh, this is taken, this example is taken from the book, Music of the Billions, but they had inverted the picture in the text, which is why the text appears backwards. Uh, I wanted to focus very briefly on Gong Chifu since it's quite uh, prevalent. And I wanted to show an example of what to be careful of if you ever come across notation systems that you are not familiar with. Uh, this kind of transliteration is to be avoided. Um, do not ever, I mean, at least in my opinion, do not ever transliterate uh, tones or notes from one tuning system or one musical practice to another, um, that being Western Occidental, because they do not correspond and they give a false idea of what the music sounds like and the relationship between the notes. So if anything, during this lecture, I would really hope for you to remember that. Uh, this is kind of a better chart uh, to be found uh, that would, if you just ignore the upper part of the 12 equally tempered tones, you could still derive a lot of information because the soulfish syllables are a better indication um, of relatively where the notes lie because you don't um, transpose your system, you don't conceptually transpose your system of thinking to a Occidental one um, as much as you would by looking at a uh, looking at a uh, musically notated graph. Uh, and finally, uh, this is a more accurate description of how this notation system works. It is a set of uh, symbols that uh, show the relationship uh, of the notes in relation to each other, much like a scale, but not exactly a scale. So one would be your fundamental tone, two would be the distance between, uh, from one and et cetera, et cetera. So it's better to think of it that way. And here is a, uh, what a score would look like. Um, this is a regional variant, Gong Chifu. Uh, so there are many, maybe I, I omitted that, there's a lot of regional variants for each notation. They're not, it's not a, they're not at all standardized. They just have overall symmetry and patterns that correlate from one another. Uh, I wanted to include uh, a very, not very well known notation system from Tibet, but very beautiful nonetheless. Uh, very graphic in nature. 
we unfortunately do not know much about it, the international community at large. Uh, I put two quotes from 1975, a book written in 1975, that kind of illustrates our general ignorance on uh, Yang Yi's notation. But um, nonetheless, it exists and it's very beautiful. Uh, there was a doctoral thesis written in 2009 that did delve deeper into how this notation works, but there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, but from what we do know, uh, these uh, lines present some sort of melodic direction and the text um, are hymns and chants of the Buddhist traditions uh, with additional, sometimes additional instrumentation but no rhythmic indications at all. And uh, moving down from Tibet, down the Himalayas into India, another very ancient and profound uh, tradition of music that dates is one of the most well-documented along with the Chinese systems, uh, one of the most well-documented musical systems in the world because we can trace it back to the Vedic texts um, that describe how um, to chant the hymns. I think this uh, image is kind of self-explanatory. So move on. Uh, from the Vedic texts evolved um, the music and then quite later um, uh, notation system. The most famous one, uh, oh, sorry, uh, India, uh, most commonly, uh, people divide Indian uh, classical music into two different systems, the North and the South, or better referred to as Hindustani for the North and Carnatic for the South. And each have uh, similar but different ways of notating their music, as well as interpreting uh, the musical elements of what they play. But there's still a lot of similarities between them. Uh, they tend to use the Hindi alphabet or the alphabet of their uh, local culture, uh, since there are many, um, along with a series of dots and slurs and ties that would show, uh, that would have rhythmic indications. And also if we higher the pitch or we lower the pitch as illustrated, um, I'm sorry, as illustrated in the second, photo uh, to the right, to the bottom right, for example. So if you see on the S and R, for example, there are dots on top of it. Uh, Hindustani music is usually uh, notated in what is called Bhatkandi notation. He was a composer and, uh, and musician uh, that detailed this system, uh, including the lyrics of what is to be sung, uh, the ornamentation. So there, um, if you see there are grace notes on the bottom, on the top uh, left, uh, and as well as uh, the notes. Uh, the tempo is indicated by, the, uh, the rhythm and tempo are indicated by patterns, basic patterns called tals, um, which make, which give the interpreters a, uh, foundation on which to further improvise on. So it's not a detailed, it's not an exactly super detailed notation like you would find in the West, but it is nevertheless, um, some argue more effective. Um, in the South, so in the Carnatic tradition, as I was saying before, you have these uh, dots on top of letters and on the bottom. Uh, so just a little uh, caveat, sometimes they do notate their music using Latin script. This is due to British colonization of India. Um, but usually it'll be in Tamil, for example. Uh, right, so we have the indication of octaves. So that's the pitch, where the pitch is placed. Uh, the note names. Uh, certain... Uh, lines and dashes to show you ornamentation. And yeah. 
So moving to the West now, um, the Iranian tradition is an interesting one uh, for its, uh, some would say it's um, disuse, it's unuse of notation. Uh, Iranian musicians and composers throughout the ages have um, found it unnecessary to notate their music, um, if not uh, inhibitory towards the practice. But uh, during the Islamic, what is referred to as the Islamic golden age, Iran was very influenced uh, by the ideas uh, coming from the Arab world and uh, wholeheartedly delve into research in all fields and music as well. Uh, most of these texts that I'm about to show you were written in, in Arabic by Persian scholars. Uh, normally, I would not differentiate uh, Iran and the Arab world during this time because they were one and the same, but for uh, matters of, um, for musical, uh, for, for matters relating to the systems, because they are different, um, I decided to include uh, one section on Iran and one section on Arabic. Uh, the most famous, one of the most famous um, texts, it's called The Great Book of Music by Al Farabi. And uh, Al Farabi wrote this uh, as part of a, a wider uh, a wider collection um, of musical writings uh, to kind of capture what was going on at the time and to further musical research. So any notation that comes is purely theoretical and is not meant to be interpreted by uh, performers or composers. Um, this is a picture of an oud and the different notes and frets um, and tuning systems that are possible on the oud. Um, the Perso Arabic uh, way of notating pitches was called abjad, um, based off of the, the actual the script letters themselves. After Ibn Farabi comes Ibn Sina, uh, very, another very famous philosopher of the period. You can kind of see more mathematical relationships uh, that he delineates between um, intervals and tones and also on the instrument itself. This kind of, this continued on, this thread of thought kind of continued on to influence other thinkers that came after it, like um, Ormavi, uh, who organized a theory of scales, of Persian scales used at the time into this uh, very beautiful, uh, much like uh, much like we would think of like what the circle of fifths are, there was a lot of experimentation um, in the Arab world at the time uh, along those very lines, if not influencing the West later on during the Renaissance. Uh, Shirazi is very, uh, whose name means of Shiraz, is a, another famous thinker who kind of uh, experimented with uh, this kind of box notation that we uh, find today in contemporary music as well, um, where the instruments uh, and uh, performance directions are kind of organized in this matrix format that is meant to be uh, read like a like a linear time uh, like a linear time scale. And finally, uh, I did want to tie in really quick uh, what I was saying about music, mathematics, and mysticism. Here's an excellent idea. Uh, this is called the circle of lovers. Uh, lovers is meant to be taken uh, not literally, but um, spiritually. So maybe your, um, you know, your spiritual love or your relationship with uh, God at the time. Uh, in the 20th century, uh, the, the British and the uh, United States took a heavy interest in Iran uh, because of its tobacco uh, industry um, and also because oil started to become uh, discovered and K 
came with that came an influx of uh, exchanges between uh, you know these three cultures, and the Iranians, uh, notably Vaziri, uh, had this idea of well we should notate our music just as precisely as uh, you know Western music does, so we can preserve uh, the thousands of years of music we have. Uh, without the you know, danger of it being lost. So they kind of invented a similar way of notating, but because Iranian music, um, like um, Indian music and Arabic music uses uh, intervals that are smaller than a semitone, they needed to find a way of more generally notating what microtone uh, to play. And so they come up with koron and sori, and they kind of fit in just like they do on an occidental score. Um, if not, this is an occidental score. But what you can notice is that the, if you listen to Iranian music um, or any music that is not Western, you will see the, you'll quickly come to terms with the poverty, the rhythmic poverty, poverty that of Western notation. So uh, even though there has been a heavy in emphasis more and more on uh, notating, uh, Iranians notating their music using Western notation, they're still, it, it is still necessary to train with a master and have a master-student relationship in order to accurately transmit uh, all the melodic patterns and, and uh, melodies and uh, styles of playing Iranian music. So if you want, it's this, this is more in the vein of a mnemonic Device, uh, which could be a little easier to read depending on your education and your upbringing. Um, yeah. uh, moving on to the Arabic world, same, the same time period. Um, so uh, Al-Kindi, kind of the philosopher that is uh, the, uh, if you want, the, the intellectual father of all these musical philosophers wrote a very famous book that we, we have fragments of uh, where he details in a uh, letter script uh, many of the directions of how to play a piece of music. Um, it's kind of hefty, as you can see, and not really uh, musical. So it's purely theoretical. So it's not meant to be read by musicians, but just a way uh, of seeing the music on a written format. It was, it was a first experiment. But this idea kind of caught on and people experimented. So you get all these beautiful graphs. Um, could not find the author of this book, but the book is Shajarat al Tawu, And his a treatise on the knowledge of melodies. Um, I will personally dedicate part of my research to finding out what this book is. And, um, maybe potentially translating it in the future. Uh, continuing on, uh, 16th century, still a lot of experimentation with uh, theoretical experimentation on how to organize uh, the different musical material of a system. So interestingly enough, we have something like the circle of melodies that are that is related to the cosmological um, phenomenon uh, or zodiacs. So 12 zodiacs um, related to these melodies. How? I, I do not know. I was not able to uh, dig deeper, but nevertheless uh, is, a, is evidence that music is tied to a, um, that music is not only a musical activity or was not just a musical activity, it was tied to other things, um, spiritual and perhaps uh, you know, further. Uh, even in the 20th century, uh, this is from a very famous uh, Egyptian uh, musician and composer um, who did not uh, who, who did not only notate his music in or, or his musical ideas in Western notation, but also his own system. And lastly, uh, the Ottoman Turkic world. Uh, why Ottoman and why not just Turkish as today? Because uh, most of the big developments that are still uh, 
used today have come from the Ottoman period. They were developed in this very rich uh, historical crossroads between Europe, the Arabic world, and the Iranian world. Um, the, firstly, the Ottomans were inspired by, of course, the Arab treatises of the Islamic Golden Age. So they did start by using some kind of blend of abjad notation. Turk Turkish was also written in Arabic script at the time before in the early 20th century, it turned into Latin script uh, that we know today. So uh, the Arabic influence is very hefty on the way they write. Some people even, I know some researchers that do not distinguish, um, like holistically, they do not distinguish between Turkish uh, music from Anatolia and the Arabic world because they use the same maqams, they use the same instruments um, with uh, stylistic and regional differences, but very, it's very hard to rip them apart from each other. Um, And to finish, uh, I did want to share with you all uh, this superb blog um, by musicologist and composer. Uh, I think if you just type May Mai online, May Mai timeline of music notation, for example, that page will pop up. And uh, it's kind of an ongoing work where he charts the, uh, he, it's an ambitious uh, blog that charts all the dates more or less of notation developments throughout the world. So it could be very interesting. Uh, many things that I did not cover here, you will find there. Um, Armenian notation, for example. Um, he, this Korean, this Japanese, just almost everything you can think of um, is on that blog. And yes, I wanted to leave more times for questions and answers. So, you know, fire away. Thank you, Daria. That's super interesting. Um, the images are really cool too to see. Mm -hmm. that. Give some cool references to the participants. Does anybody have any questions or ideas? Thank you so much. That was so cool. I really loved all the different types of notation, but I particularly like that Tibetan one. I just wondered if there's any recordings of what it sounds like. Oh yeah. Um, well, I was digging because the worst thing I thing I was most afraid of is uh, putting a recording of a chant or hymn that was either not in the style of the the regional style of that notation. So I unfortunately cannot correlate the two. Um, but in theory, they are hymns and chants that are um, universal in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition. So if we could read what those scores are, um, we would be able to, you know, correlate them with the recording, but unfortunately. If I wanted to hear the genre of music, what could I look up? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, you can, uh, what do I have on my Spotify personally <laughs> or other accounts? Uh, I usually type, there are some buzzwords, um, you can write Tibetan Buddhist rites. Uh, that's that's a good one. Um, there is uh, Buddhist chants, Tibetan Buddhist chants. Uh, there you could also type uh, Tibetan throat singing because uh, they share that with the they share that with the Mongolians. Um, and if you want Tibetan music that is outside of that. Uh, outside of the, the religious, the spiritual sphere, uh, there is a great instrument uh, called the Dramyin um, that you can look up, D-R-A-M-Y-I-N, um, and that should also give you some idea of the folk music. Um, yeah, it's a lute. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Anyone else have any questions or also on the previous 
lecture of Daria, maybe? Oh, yes. yes. Or does anyone have any ideas of what exactly you would you would be trying to notate for the in this program? And maybe Daria could give some like ideas or some um, references, kind of like feeding off of your your pieces. You know, I haven't had a chance to really listen to anything that's uh, been made because it's all in progress. So it's still a big mystery. But does anyone have some ideas? I mean, like what I was, oh yeah, by the way, I'm a dancer, I'm wearing a green vest, her. Anyway, like uh, what I was planning on doing was kind of structuring it like the recipe book. So in the ingredients section, I would have like the list of instruments you would require, like the software sounds that you would want. And then for the rest of it, I would kind of structure it like a chord sheet where I would have notes of chord well yeah chords next to lyrics and be like you figure it out <laughs> yeah that's that's great that's great um i don't have really anything to add to that i think you yeah that that sounds as because i didn't tell you all this but i'm a composer myself and musician so if i saw something like that i would appreciate it uh, you know difference but you you would it's good that you give the recipe but then you say like mix it mix it how you want that's the point of music right <laughs> so yeah that's um a cool idea does anyone else sydney you had wanted to say something yeah i'm um, currently in a cafe and it might be a bit loud so i hope you can hear me clearly um, oh, sure. yeah. but my yeah, but um, yeah, I was thinking of doing something, and I think we were chatting with Tom about this the other day. Is I think something a little bit more, maybe it's like a bit more abstract or visual or less. Um, and I wondered if you had any examples of things that perhaps captured more like the energy or the emotion of a musical piece, or if that completely falls out of notation in that case, if one's not able to like play the piece from that. Mm. Uh, so are you by any chance gravitating towards uh, graphic notation? Mm, what do you mean by that? Um, like uh, representing musical sounds either by drawings or or um, some kind of like sh or shapes. Yeah, I think I think a little bit more. Um, but I haven't. Yeah, I haven't given. Um, like I don't have any real concrete um, ideas, but because I think the pieces that I'm writing in terms of chords and stuff are quite simple. Um, I think I was more focusing on like trying to convey maybe the energy that comes behind playing those two chords or something like that. Um, yeah. The energy, I see. So uh, also maybe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe like the way you would play the chords, like the energy, with which you would play those chords, like the dynamics. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I think you're, yeah, I think a good avenue to start would be graphic notation. Um, like there are, I think the best thing to keep in mind, I'm sure you all already know this, but I'll say it anyways, uh, is, you know, there are no rules. As long as you clarify what's behind your uh, thought process and what you want, nobody can criticize you. So I would definitely, for inspiration, yeah. I, I would look at graphic notation and then kind of, you know, go from there. Great, thank you so much. Well, is there anybody that is struggling uh, with how, like how to notate their music and wanted to just ping pong ideas? I have a question if no one else is gonna go. Yes. Yeah. Um sorry, I don't want to take up all the air time, so feel free to go, guys. Um I'm thinking of notating mine with kind of like scales or modes. Uh like as in in this section, like kind of group together a certain a mode. 
and then in this section a different mode um and i was just wondering if we've come across anything that does that or if you've seen any creative ways like i don't just want to draw a box around a scale you know like i want to do it kind of partially notated but graphically i'm going to try and paint some colors behind it as well so it has a kind of like graphic feel to it but there is some notation and i just wondered if you had ideas of like making groupings of mode to look nice within a score Mm. That's a tough one because uh, whenever we uh, write something down or visualize it, um, there is a question of space and the relationship between. So it is a tough one. Uh, besides boxes, I mean, uh, I think we did see last week this one way of notating music where it was uh, kind of like the distance between the two ideas you want uh, to be most related to each other. So uh, if you want to say that, if you want to give like the, the gravity between these different parts is tighter, they're more, they're more attracted to each other than these other parts, then perhaps uh, just spatially putting them closer to each other um, would be my best guess. Um, I think the color idea is wonderful. Um, uh, black and white is a, <laughs> is a terrible, it's, it's hard on the eyes. <laughs> so the color is wonderful. I, I think that really would give it another a third dimension. Um, yeah, uh, that is as much as I can say. Uh, unfortunately, there hasn't been very much experimentation um, a lot. We, we say there is, we think there is, but at the end of the day, um, I don't, you know, we don't really see it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, did I answer your question all right, or was that helpful? Yeah, it was helpful. It pointed okay. gave me some ideas. Yeah. So thank you. Okay, good, good. Um, could I ask if, as a musician yourself, you've experimented with different forms of notation that best suit the kind of music you do, and like which ones you found to be most helpful for yourself? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, great question. I um, I when I was writing. Uh, in a more, because I'm not any, I'm not writing anymore in a Occidental you know, European format. Uh, so I've kind of put notation aside for the time being. But I, maybe like the last piece I wrote, uh, I had a lot of um, extended techniques, uh, and I tried. I have. I got a book. Um, I forgot which one. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I could look it up, it's somewhere on the computer, but I did pull up some books on extended techniques because I didn't want to create my own. I thought that would be uh, too, too much of a burden. Um, but uh, I did use indeterminate notation because I wanted, I knew the effect I wanted, but it doesn't, it didn't have any specific notes. So like, for example, on the violin or the strings in general. So it was an ensemble piece for uh, woodwinds and, and strings um, and very much more uh, abstract. Um, so I wanted like sounds with harmonics. Um, I wanted very rich, like harmonic lasandis. Um, so I used the conventional, uh, I used the very conventional, like maybe 1960s ways of, of notating um because i as much as i like to be creative i always say well a score is has a practical side to it that if i go too wild um i don't know how classical musicians would would take it uh so yeah um yeah i don't know is that i feel like i didn't really answer your question too. No, but then is, is it, is it <laughs> like a lot because you're not so much working with non Western types of music or genres that you maybe have like relied more on the sort of master tutor format you were telling us about? Or uh, to, today, you mean? Good. Yeah, or in the sort of not so much like in uh, distancing yourself a little bit from Western notation. Is that sort of the alternative that you turned to? Yeah, yes, because. Um, I realized that person, I started learning Iranian music uh, three years ago, and I was getting a lot of uh, like constructive criticism uh, that I was playing the, like I was playing the sitar, I'm saying, well, you're, you're playing like 
my professor was like, you're playing the notes great, the tempo is fine, everything is like, it's it's there, but um, he's like, this, this doesn't really set, like it was a dance to the ring, called a ring. And he's like, nobody would dance to this. Nobody would dance with the way you're playing, the way you're playing it. Uh, I was like, ouch. <laughs> he's like, uh, and he, he's Iranian himself. So he was like, which is strange because the ring is kind of like a mixture between, um, can be traced back to Armenian and Kurdish elements and I'm both. So he was like, you're the perfect play person to play this kind of music and, and you're playing it very formatted, like, like very mm, mm, mm. And I realized because I was a pianist for such a long time that that was the problem. And I was also relying heavily, like visually on music. So it's like, I need to distance myself from all of this. So I can kind of not only get back, I guess, get back in touch with my roots, but in a way, um, unformat myself kind of I I'm, I'm working on these kind of theories but kind of like musical decolonization in a way uh, so uh, yeah I, I had to distance myself uh, in order to be able to play my own music my own my own culture's music that's so interesting yeah thank you for <laughs> sharing that. yeah Does anybody else have uh, any other questions? Uh, so maybe someone who hasn't uh, spoken in a while. Because also, actually, I was wondering maybe about how um, our participants could note, like, maybe even in the music, there's an element of performance that could be also something that is a little bit intertwined with the notation. I mean, like, for example, when you're talking about throat singing, you know, or these kinds of other practices or things that can't be uh, uh, so easily felt in like Western notation? Like, is there some kind of way that maybe performance was intertwined? And I don't know, maybe this could interest uh, Jordan Edge, uh, just the idea like that. Uh, if you have some... Oh yeah, no, that's no wonderful. Yeah, um, I kind I didn't have time last time. That was my last section was action notation, at least in the West. Um, but um, other cultures have used it too. So that essentially boils down to describing the way you want uh, the music to be performed. So not detailing like so much. Like if, if for example, if you're playing a guitar, not detailing exactly like where to touch. The, the frets like what frets to press down on but more like how you would um i guess to borrow uh someone's uh, words from earlier the energy with which you would interact uh you know with that instrument uh, or the way you would so you um it's kind of goes hand in hand like with extended techniques so you, you could say like um I don't know, for action or performance-based notations, it's, they're just very wordy. So you can just be like, slap the, you know, if you just want every note to be slapped, you would physically write that in the score. Or if you want, want throat singing, but at certain pitches, you could write the pitches and then say, uh, you know, in the style of throat singing. It's, it's as blunt as that. There is no uh, standardized or conventional way of doing it, so. Yeah, definitely. Um, wanted to do more of a kind of like almost like a, a gameplay thing like a sonic theater kind of um, piece where I would like map out something from the tracks that would become completely abstract and not really they would have some inner meaning towards what I've written already but then as a I would probably like break it down into like words into symbols and then into some kind of like character-based like gameplay or like sonic theater was the idea so like different bodies performing different parts of a track or like something just to improvise from completely um like the musical uh, the musical material itself or the or so i would use the musical material itself i think to make the symbolism or like the 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 gameplay thing like like a sonic gameplay thing and then i would leave 
the rest. I would give instructions and then leave the rest, like the sounds and stuff to be made by instructions. I wouldn't necessarily put like use this, use a guitar or like like nothing very specific, quite abstract. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That... I need to start like mapping out more and doing it, but these are initial ideas. But I definitely like the idea of extended technique or using body in different ways or like um things that'll enhance or deconstruct sounds or change them from like movement or those kinds of ideas is what I'm thinking about. Do you want to provide, um, like, do you want to be very precise about it and provide like an algorithm for how, for the combination, or is it more, uh, or even different algorithms to be like, this is the different ways I want you to precisely mix these elements, but you can choose which elements you want to mix together. Yeah, well, that sounds really what I was thinking. Like, yeah, like there are a lot of set elements there, but you choose how you perform them. So if someone likes to move while they make sound, do that. Or if someone wants to embody this idea of a character and and make some sound or sing, um, do that. Um, but I don't want it to be too complex, very like quite um simple symbolism on a kind of map, like a game board or something. <laughs> yeah that's that's really cool it, intuitive right yeah like placed placed in like a a room and then people have a space and then it's, it's improvisers are brought along and they like interpret it how they want um there's a good there's a good thing umpsk social club that are based in berlin and um, that do these live theatrical gameplay um performances so everyone will like sign up to performers or sign up to come and do this thing they don't exactly know what they're going to be drawn, drawn into at the start but they know they've been told certain things so you get like a preparation set of tasks like make a character what does this character do become this character for two hours a day before you come to the workshop oh wow okay. and then you get there and it's like these long kind of drawn out like larp things or rpgs but you're like in there and they dress up and like and they and in, inhabit these characters and like bodies for like sometimes they do quite long ones like 24 hours and then public are like invited to like watch it in a gallery or like those kind of things were they inspired by any chance off of uh, Dungeons and Dragons because it sounds a lot like that yeah I think yeah but it's all kind of this they it's like weird they're looking at all these kinds of games and stuff and then making it quite contemporary and quite like art, art, arty. But they're great. It's really good. Yeah, I definitely encourage the, uh, I think that's a great idea to have a more audience interaction, which is missing uh, in the cultures of the West. So um, yeah, uh, excited to see how you would pull it off. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Cool, sounds interesting. And Anna Maria, do you have any um, ideas? Yeah, hi, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I was kind of thinking because I don't really uh, write or uh, play instruments or kind of write um, music or read music. I was just going to write my lyrics out um, as a physical, like focus more on the visual things because I make digital art. And a lot of um, kind of multimedia visual art stuff. So I'd focus on the visual side a bit more and make a spread that's got like the words like written with the like, graphics that I would make with the words and then um, like design it visually to be to be more received as a uh, so, for, so the, for the words to be received more as like how they sound melodically being spoken out loud. And I wouldn't really add any I don't know how to add notations and I wouldn't really be doing that part of it you know uh would you be is it meant to be a musical work or just a spoken it would be lyrics it would be lyrics of, of lyrics. a song yeah of a song that you wrote or of a song yeah. uh yes I see and um uh where would the music come from from the song you wrote are you working with a composer like a co yes. songwriter? oh I see okay mm -hmm. Okay. Like all the songs I've got out are re are produced by someone else. I don't produce them. Right. I see. Um, yeah. Uh, my question for you is, 
uh, does the music need to be notated? Because that, uh, you know, just like the Iranians, you like, we don't need to notate our music. So, you know, uh, if it's only the lyrics and you the graph, I think that's, you know, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just going to focus on, yeah, the part of it that I can do and I'm good at, which is the digital, like the visual design of it. And then just put the words there as lyrics, as written out lyrics. Yeah. But, thank you. Yeah. Or if any, I don't know if you're because you you're a you're a singer. So um just like they would do in the Middle Ages in Europe, or you know, the Tibetans were doing, if you ever experiment with improvising your melody on top of a mm -hmm. uh, preconceived, then I think those uh, very beautiful curves and shapes would yeah would be your best friend to be honest yeah okay. so i understand what you, so you mean like to put the visual um lines and and shapes under each lyric representing how it would be sung right yeah exactly exactly yeah, that's interesting and, yeah, i can look at that you know what it means to you and how because i guess eventually it would be idiosyncratic it would just be for you mm -hmm. so how would i you know how do I, I think. Yeah, you, I guess, yeah, you wouldn't be able to, like, I wouldn't be able to make something that I would give to someone to then perform or play. I would, it would just be something that someone would look at and take in visually with their eyes and read in their head, you know? Absolutely. Or, or if some, if you really have some diehard fans, mm. uh, they will want to learn. They would want to know how you think and what your creative process is. And then they will delve deep into there. And then I'm sure you'll get a lot of emails and phone calls. Like, what were you thinking when you drew this squiggle? Um, and that's that's wonderful too. That this I really like that kind of personal relationship. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, thank you. I'll, yeah, I'll take I'll keep that in mind when I'm designing it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that sounds really cool. It makes me think of the squiggly kind of visual notations you were showing us, like inscribing that into lyrics is actually pretty cool because it's true that it's not just the producer who's making the song. I mean, like you're singing it in different ways, but not like, you know, not talking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is actually cool to recognize that, like as Daria is saying that like you're, you're an instrument and it connects well with the question of Ines in the chat who said, hi, I'm very interested on voice as an instrument and was wondering how no notation informed that practice. Ooh, uh, it's actually the other way around, to be honest. In my opinion, is that voice informed a notation. Um, uh, it's actually, I wanted to kind of tie this in, and it's, it's kind of like coming back to me. Someone asked me, I forgot who it was exactly, someone asked me, like, was Islamic music, Islamic music um, like when they're reciting the Quran, do they have they notated that? And the answer is no, but they have. Um, shown the stresses like all notation started from a vocal practice as far as we know stressing the syllables of what was to be sung because people would forget oh like i want you to stretch this syllable or or this vowel at this precise moment um, in the chant um and that was all voice uh so someone would hear that and then notate exactly where all that would happen um so like i would want like an ah and not Ah, um, and that notation developed from there, really. Uh, later on, I think, like if you look at opera, uh, opera if, like in my experience, opera singers do complain a lot about <laughs> like how music is written because either it's like written badly for their range, um, because composers are not usually singers. Uh, which I think is that singing is one of the most primordial things you can do as a musician. So you, like you, everybody should be able to sing somewhat well. Uh, and uh, so the no notation has often informed it badly and, and kind of put like give bad habits. It kind of formatted, I think at least in the Western tradition, it formatted singers to a certain way. Um, and I think that's why popular music um, and jazz singing, like scatting, for example, was kind of a rejection of all that. They were like, uh, I don't want this format anymore. That's killing my ornamentation. It's killing my range. Uh, it's it's killing the, the the 
quality, the timber, the quality of the timber of my voice, because I'm, I'm having certain, I'm developing certain habits that I normally wouldn't. Uh, the dangers of intellectualizing anything, to be honest. With you. Did that, sorry, did that, that kind of answer your question, Ines? <laughs> cool. Cool, perfect. Uh, well, thank you so much, um, Daria. My pleasure. Um, I don't know if uh, you have any like website or something you want to share with the participants or even just your email if you're open to that um, yes. to keep the conversation going or for them to follow your work. Uh, uh, yes, uh, here's my email. Uh, so if you have any questions, just feel free to shoot me an email. I love talking music. Um, my work is still in progress. Uh, I recorded a lot of stuff and I'm in the mixing and mastering stage, which, uh, you know, it takes forever. So, you know, to be, you know, to be announced. Um, well, I can't wait because uh, since I'm lucky <laughs> enough to be in the same city as you, if you have any concerts, I will definitely go. And maybe some of the participants, uh, if they're ever passing through Paris, will be interested. So um, if you ever set up your newsletter, let us know. <laughs> okay, well, thanks so much, Daria. We have our next um, lecturer who jumped on already. So if you want to stay with us, you can. But if you have uh, other things to get to, uh, I understand. <laughs> yes, uh, I do. Thank you so much, everyone, for your attention and for University of Lingram, especially you, Chloe, for recommending me for this. Um, <laughs> and I will leave you to your next lecture. It was a pleasure. Please don't hesitate to contact me. It's, I want to hear what you're all doing. So. Cool. Thank Bye. you, Gloria. <laughs> Bye. Awesome. Uh, so I'm just going to end the...